Welcome back to part two of my Uganda Gorilla Trip episodes. If you haven't heard part one, you should go back and hear that first and then come back here. Then you'll know that I'm with a small group up in the beautiful Bewindi Impenetrable Forest National Park and have just had an hour of close encounters with 14 beautiful and magnificent mountain gorillas. Previously on the Radio Vagabond. It's absolutely incredible. I didn't think we were going to be able to get that close to all the uh, gorillas. We were basically within reaching distance of a silverback. It was incredible. Yeah. I didn't expect them to be so natural around us. And I mean, I know they said that, you know, they are accustomed to seeing humans, but to see that the babies playing and feeling that comfortable and just doing what they do every day, that close in proximity to us was just astounding, I thought. And the size of the silver back oh was insane. But I'm still up there in the forest and the day is far from over. We still had a mission ahead of us, the grand descent back to civilization. Now you may think, oh, going downhill, that's a piece of cake. Well, let me tell you, it wasn't all smooth sailing for this intrepid traveler. Meet Pala Bo, a full-time traveler and digital nomad from Denmark on an epic journey around the world. This is The Radio Vagabond. The descent turned out to be a bit of a challenge. It was like nature decided to throw in a curveball just to keep things interesting. Steep slopes, slippery terrain, and unexpected obstacles tested my balance and agility. It was an action-packed descent that would have made any adventure movie director proud. Picture this, a not-so-rainy day in the muddy forest. Sure, it had poured the day before, transforming these tracks into a slippery mess. Now, here's where the fun begins. The rest of the hiking group Oh, so clever, pranced along with their sensible hiking shoes, with so much pattern in their outsoles that they could probably scale a vertical wall. And then there was me, the fashionable clueless one, strutting my stuff in regular sneakers that might as well have been made of banana peel. With every step I took, it was like walking on a tight rope of terror. The mud clung to my shoe soles like a clingy X, turning each step into a slippery slide of pure comedy. I was the star of my very own slapstick show, slipping and sliding like a cartoon character on a banana bench. Now, don't get me wrong, I had my two trusty walking sticks in my hands, ready to conquer the treacherous terrain. But even with those in my arsenal, I was no match for the slippery mud monster. It was like having roller skates with wheels that had a mind of their own, doing pirouettes and cartwheels whenever they pleased. Who needs a theme park when you have Mother Nature's amusement park right under your feet? And let me tell you about my grand finale. In slip number 14, I went tumbling down the mountainside, a graceful descent worthy of a gymnastic routine. Well, maybe not so much. In the midst of this aerobatic extravaganza, executing somersaults, my glasses, those trusty companions, were rudely knocked off my muddy face in a moment of sheer brilliance. As my spectacles soar through the air like a wild bird, I summoned my lightning-fast ninja reflexes and plucked them out of thin air. I snapped them mid-flight and with the grace of a swan, twirled around for a few additional elegant somersaults. Lucky for me, there were no rocks waiting to give me a big bruise surprise. No, I landed on just a bed of soft vegetation, nature's way of saying, hey buddy, don't take yourself too seriously. As the two guides rushed to my rescue, I couldn't help but chuckle. Pride wounded, but nothing else. It was a laughter-filled reunion, as they pulled me back on the slippery track, like the heroes of a B-grade comedy. And when we finally reached the bottom, after six more slips, my transformation was complete. I was a masterpiece of mud, a walking canvas of earth tones. Mud on my shoes, mud on my jeans, mud even on my face. Fashion statement of the century, I tell you. Ridiculous? Absolutely. But hey, who needs a day in the spa when you can have a mud makeover in the great outdoors? Okay, we, we just got down and it, 
these shoes, yeah, this is not, these are not hiking shoes. They, they, they are so slippery and it was so muddy up there. And uh, it was like I was wearing roller skates that were uh, wheels going all directions. And I was just slipping all the time. I don't know how many times I slipped. One time <laughs> I slipped and then I tumbled down the mountain, down the side of the, the mountain, uh, three, four meters. Thank God there weren't any rocks, so the only thing that was hurt was my pride. I don't know how I managed to, but when I was, uh, I, I made uh, tumbles many times. And when I came down, I had the glasses in my hands. I don't know how I managed to catch them as they fell off my face, but I got them and uh, otherwise they would probably still be up there. But we made it, we saw the gorillas and it was just absolutely amazing. So there you have it. My misadventures in the muddy forest, lesson learned, invest in some sensible shoes and always be ready for a comedy routine when nature decides to play a little joke on you. And I was just the clumsiest actor in the cast. The Radio Vagabond. Gotta keep moving. If travel is your passion and you want escapism while still upholding your work and family responsibilities, you can travel vicariously from the comfort of your own home. This is the Radio Vagabond Podcast. After the trek, we went back to the starting point to pick out our certificates as a sign of successful tracking of the mountain gorillas in the Bewindi Impenetrable Forest National Park. This encounter with the mountain gorillas was nothing short of transformative and the reminder of the connection between human and ape. If you consider going gorilla tracking yourself, reach out to my friends at Eco Adventure Safari and please tell them I sent you. Find all the links in the episode notes and on theradiovagabond.com. You're listening to the Radio Vagabond podcast. If you're curious about his looks, check out the Radio Vagabond on TikTok or Instagram. Just remember what curiosity did to the cat. Uganda is a diverse and culturally rich country in East Africa that can boast of having a fascinating linguistic landscape. It's a multilingual country with more than 70 languages. 43 of these are living languages. With the many different ethnic groups, each with its own unique heritage and traditions, Uganda is home to this wide variety of languages. English is one of the official languages of Uganda, something they inherited when Uganda was under British rule. It's widely used in government, education, business and the media. It's also used a lot among the urban populations and educated people. Swahili is the second official language and is widely spoken mostly in areas near the borders of Kenya and Tanzania. But Luganda is the most widely spoken indigenous language in Uganda and mostly spoken in the central region around the capital Kampala. Luganda is used in media and taught in schools, so let's learn a little bit of Luganda so you can impress the locals when you get to Uganda. Here are some of the most important words. And now, the Radio Vagabond Language School. Today, Luganda. Hi. How are you? Ogambotia. Hi. How are you? Ogambotia. Thank you. Wevale. Thank you. Wevale. Welcome. Sanyusokulaba. Welcome. Sanyusokulaba. Okay. Kale. Okay. Kale. Two beers, please. Chupa bilia zomwengi. Two beers, please. Chupa bilia zomwengi. Yes, please. Kale sewo. Yes, please. Kale sewo. Cheers. Tinyuemu. Cheers. Tinyuemu. Where can I get a Rolex? Rolex. Where can I get a Rolex? Rolex. And that was the Radio Vagabond Language School. Today, Luganda. On the way back to Kampala, we cross the equator and make a stop so I can get the typical picture of standing with one foot in the northern hemisphere and the other foot in the southern hemisphere. A unique experience that captures the essence of being at the center of the earth. It's like standing in two places at once 
without moving a muscle. They've got these quirky demonstrations that mess with your mind. Water swirling in different directions just because you're a few meters on one side or the other. It's like the equator has its own magical water show. My name is Bob. Radio Vagabond. This episode is brought to you in part by Hotels25.com. It's a website that helps you find the best prices on hotels and guest houses and hostels around the world in one simple search. Hotels25.com Something not so good happened on this trip. Something that would have an effect on my life as a digital nomad for months after this. And a fair warning before I play this clip. It's a bit long, it's a bit technical, so if you're not interested in what I'm going to talk about, uh, you can skip the rest of the episode. I'm fine with that. So if, if that's the case, see you in the next episode. And if you're still here, uh, just a few words before I play this clip of me sitting on the front porch of my Airbnb in Kampala. This was recorded about a year ago in early 22, a few months after I was in Denmark and, and bought a computer. Just so you're not going to get confused when I start mentioning times and years and all of that. And that also means that after the clip, I can give you an update on what actually happened. And uh, <laughs> you should listen to that as well. Okay, here's the clip. Hi, guys. I promised that I'll share my ups and downs on my journey. And right now, I've hit an absolute low as a digital nomad. I'm on the front porch in my Airbnb apartment in Kampala, Uganda. So you can hear the traffic uh, behind me and you might even be able to hear the church next to me. I, they just started a sermon and now I can hear people singing. So bear with me on that. I'm going to tell you about my, my problems uh, that I have right now. It's about my, my Mac. And as a, as a digital nomad, obviously, I need to have my computer and able to be able to work and edit these podcast episodes. Uh, I can, <laughs> that's, I'm a, yeah, I, I still work and I have to be able to use my computer. Um, in the very beginning of my journey, I had problems with the Mac I, I started traveling with. So, yeah, it was a couple of months into it when I came to Budapest in, in Hungary that uh, I, I, my computer broke down and I had to buy a new one um, right there and then. And uh, I got one with a Hungarian keyboard, <laughs> which was a little bit annoying. Obviously, I can switch uh, which language uh, the, the keys are in, so I didn't have to use it. But then some of the uh, keys were in the wrong places, like the Y and the C was uh, switched over uh, because they use the C a lot in in Hungary. So that was where the, uh, the Y is on, on, on regular keyboards. And then there were also some, uh, some yeah, Hungarian letters that uh, we don't use. Uh, but the most annoying part was when I switched it to, in my case, a Danish keyboard, all the different keys with uh, that goes with the numbers, uh, they were in completely different places. So I had to remember which goes where. And uh, yeah, it's it's been a challenging uh, thing to work with that computer. But um, the most annoying thing for me was that uh, I always ran out of space. It had a 500 gigabyte hard drive on it and all the time I would get messages saying that uh, you have now uh, reached the limit you need to erase something so uh, it was um, it was a bit annoying so and at the same time it was also going uh, starting to become more and more slow so when the new MacBook Pro came out in uh, I think November October November 2021 I thought okay now it's time to upgrade so i ordered a macbook pro when i was back in denmark i got one with a danish keyboard so i can use that and uh, and and also with a two terabyte hard drive so it's it's been wonderful to have this new computer with uh, also yeah it's much faster and it's so much better uh, and it's it was also so expensive it's 
by far the most expensive equipment I've ever bought. So yeah, but I thought I need I need to have that. I need to uh, be able to work and uh, and I th- that's my tool that I use every single day. So I have to use it. So I've been um, I've been taking really good care of my my new baby, and uh, it's it's been absolutely great. Just a few days ago, I was uh, on the Gorilla Safari uh, here in Uganda, and I brought my computer because uh, not that I was going to be working on that trip. It was a two-night, three-day trip to the western part of Uganda, and uh, but I brought it in case somebody of my clients would say, we need you to do something urgently. I have a Samsonite uh, roller suitcase, um, a carry-on size roller suitcase with a, with a pocket in the front for computer, kind of a padded uh, thing that uh, my computer goes into every time I, I, I move. And I did that with the computer here as well and uh, yeah, took really good care of it. And when I came home and opened the computer, I didn't use it at all on the trip, but when I opened it, I could see that the screen was broken i have no idea how that happened Uh, i've uh, had the suitcase with me almost all the time i spoke to the the driver if he accidentally dropped it and uh, he said he didn't and i i really really don't know how this could have happened there's not any marks on it but the screen just doesn't work Uh, it's completely black apart from a few colorful Uh, thin lines in the upper uh, left corner of the screen but the screen doesn't work and I cannot make it work so I was freaking out the night that I came back and found out Uh, I slept on it and then the next morning I I started um, googling where can I get a replaced uh, screen uh, for a new MacBook Pro I was looking here in Kampala uh, if they there just happened to be an official Apple store um, no there's not uh, there are a few stores called Apple store but it's just a, a small uh, computer phone shop uh, that that sells and repairs Apple products uh, but it's it's not an official Apple store it, they are authorized Apple dealers and Apple repair shops so I started uh, uh, chatting with one of them uh, they had a, a WhatsApp uh, link on their their website, and I started chatting with this guy called Tony, and I explained my situation and uh, told him that it was a brand new model. I bought it two months ago. It's a 2021 model uh, of a MacBook Pro, and uh, he said, "Yeah, absolutely. Um, is it a 13 or a 15 inch?" and to be honest, I don't know. I just know that I chose the bigger screen. So I said, well, I guess it's a 15 inch. Um, and uh, and then he said, yeah, we, we have that. We can fix that. It will take us 45 minutes and we just bring it in and we will change it while you go for a cup of coffee and uh, you will be good to go. Uh, he told me that the price of a new screen, I, th- I thought, okay, this is going to be expensive. Uh, it's around 500 he said, uh, 500 US dollars to replace it. And uh, then when he said, oh, wait, it's a 15-inch, so it's, um, it's a little bit more, maybe 600 So I said, yeah, sure. Uh, I, I have an insurance, and I think they'll, they'll cover it. But no matter what, even if I had to pay it out of pocket, I, I, I need my computer, obviously. So there's, an, there's no, no discussion about it. I just had to pay what, whatever it is. And then while he was uh, writing this, he I, I was Googling this. Uh, I found the receipt, and I was Googling the, the, the model number, and it came up as a 16.2-inch. So I wrote that, well, I think actually it's a 16.2-inch, f- uh, um, this screen. Uh, but you said 15. Say, so yeah, but I, b- when I Google this model number, it comes up as uh, 16.2. Well, he said, bring it in, and we'll take a look at it. I'm sure we can fix it. So I got in an Uber and went across town uh, to uh, to this little little Apple uh, shop, uh, Apple repair shop on the first floor of a small mall here in uh, in Kampala. And uh, he, uh, the moment he saw it, he said, "Oh, that's the new model." 
uh, yeah, that's what I told you very specifically. It's a new model. I bought it two months ago. It's uh, the brand new Apple MacBook Pro. Uh, uh, no, I don't think we, we can do that. We, we definitely don't have those in stock. And um, at the same time, I... I had explained my my Airbnb host about my problem, and and she said that she knows of someone here that uh, is very professional and had uh, fixed her MacBook um, several times whenever she's had a problem, and uh, recommended uh, this person and gave me her number. So I, while he was while I was in the shop with Tony, and he started calling his friends to see if uh, anybody could get uh, this uh, specific screen i was also texting with the uh, emmanuel uh, from uh, that I, w- I was recommended by my airbnb host and um, she said well give me the serial number um, and i did it's on the back of the computer and uh, she said well when i google this i can see that this has been bought in denmark on this day and yes this is covered by warranty that's the good news apple will change it no matter how it happened i still need to have that confirmed uh, but um, apparently that's what she said that uh, they would fix it for free but the bad news is that it'll take three to four weeks to get it fixed and since i'm here for another week and then going on to my next destination gotta keep moving I say, well, I, that's not an option. And and then I asked, what if what if I what if I pay for it? She said, well, this specific model is quite expensive. It's around a thousand U.S. dollars to get fixed. Said, yeah, but I think I have insurance to cover it. Uh, but can it be done? She started uh, looking into it, and uh, while Tony was uh, searching among his friends. Uh, Emmanuel was doing the same in her network and they came back with the same answer no it's not possible it does not exist here in uh, Uganda and because it's such a new model so you 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 can't you can't have that done here uh, in, in well you can but it takes two uh, three to four weeks I also have a friend in um, in Nairobi Kenya uh, that is a slightly more modern country and they might have an official Apple store so my friend um, started um, asking her uh, go to guy for for MacBook repairs and uh, came back with the exact same answer it takes 3 to 4 weeks uh, to get it fixed and that's a problem because I don't know where I am in three to four, four weeks. Uh, so, and I don't even know if they actually, if it's it's going to be fixed on the warranty. If they actually have to take my computer and send it to Cupertino in in California to get it fixed there and have it sent back, then I'll be completely without the computer because I can actually use it. It's uh, it takes a bit of um, creativity. I have an iPad and uh, they have something called Sidecar where you can use your iPad as a secondary screen to uh, to get more real estate on on your computer uh, and um, you can also mirror what's on the main screen. So I managed to do that but it takes a little little bit of creativity as I said. I have a TV here with an HDMI cable and uh, if I connect my computer to the TV I can get uh, uh, what's on the screen on my TV. It's not very good quality, so it's not something I can use to work on, but enough so I could uh, set up this sidecar thing. And then I can uh, have my iPad connected and simply just put it in in front of the keyboard, uh, no, behind the keyboard where the screen is normally and have it leaning up against the screen that doesn't work. So I get the picture that's on the screen. It's slightly smaller, so it's not the best thing to work with, but it it, it actually works. But the problem with that is that I need to connect it uh, with the HDMI cable. By the way, Apple, thank you so much for providing an HDMI uh, input on, on the computer now in the new model again. Uh, I need to do, to connect it to, to the TV in order to set up the sidecar. Uh, every time I have the iPad unplugged uh, from the computer. And um, right here, it's not a problem. I have a TV with, uh, with an HDMI uh, cable uh, so I can connect my computer. But I don't know if I'm going to have that in the next places I stay. 
so this morning, uh, my when I connected my iPad, it actually jumped back right into a Sidecar without me doing the thing with the TV. So maybe the whole thing is fixed uh, in in that sense, and I can, uh, and that's not going to be a problem. But obviously, I need to get my uh, my screen fixed, and I need to do that. And it doesn't seem like it's an option here in Africa. I have another month in Africa or that was my plan before I have to be in Spain for a conference in a month time and uh, uh, but I, I can't do a month working like this I have a lot of projects coming up and I have a lot of work to do so it's yeah I might need to go to uh, Denmark and uh, find a repair shop there or maybe I can do that in Spain but that, that, the reason I'm s- thinking going to Denmark is if I have to be without my computer for three to four weeks I have the one with the 500 uh, gigabyte hard drive that uh, is still working it's it's in Denmark in in a in a storage room so I can I can take that and use that as a backup uh, for for those three to four weeks but it's a hassle and it's a problem and um yeah i've been in total panic mode the last uh, 24 hours and uh, still am uh, so yeah a little bit of an update and i will keep you posted on what uh, what's going to happen with this sorry for being a little bit technical <laughs> in this but um, i thought that um, i i needed to share my 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 story uh, about my challenges as a digital nomad here in uh, uganda yeah okay uh, it, it, it went a bit long and a bit technical i know but wait there's more because i have an update for you let me tell you what happened after this because as i mentioned this was recorded uh, about a year ago a year and a couple of months ago when i was in uganda and uh, after this i went to rwanda uh, which is a, an amazing country. I got an episode from that at some point. Here, I stayed at an Airbnb where they had no flat screen TVs with an HDMI. Uh, so they only had very old school TVs. Uh, so <sighs> oh, this is this is this is so crazy what I did. I I went to a small computer TV shop and said. I need the smallest, cheapest TV you have with an HDMI input. I don't care how good it is. I don't care if it's big or small. Well, I like it to be as small as possible, but it's just got to be the cheapest one you have. And they had one, I think it was around uh, 100 euros or something like that. So fairly cheap, but still, I only needed it to plug it into my HDMI so I could see what was on the screen in order to find the little place on the screen where I clicked with my mouse saying mirror to iPad. And then I unplugged the TV again. This this TV was nowhere near as good as a computer screen, so I couldn't work on it. But I could see that little spot and that was all I used it for. The thing I talked about that it connects automatically, no, it didn't. No, it never did. I needed this every single time I opened my computer. So this little TV (laughs) followed me to other countries in Africa. First, I went to Burundi, and then I went to uh, Tanzania. Uh, I was in Dar es Salaam and then on Zanzibar. And from there, I went back to my home country, Denmark, uh, and found a, a, an Apple shop. It was around with the crazy Danish uh, VAT on top of it. I think one thousand two hundred uh, US dollars. And no, it wasn't covered by my insurance. And no, it wasn't covered by the Apple warranty. It, I had to. I just had to pay it, and uh, and I had it replaced. And I thought, okay, I am gonna take so good care of this. I'm gonna really be careful every time I close it, and make sure that there's nothing that would crack the screen again. And I thought, okay, this is gonna be with me for until the end of this computer's lifetime. 
But wait, there's more. A couple of months ago when I was in Australia, I was in Brisbane, all of a sudden the screen went black again. And this time there were no uh, small uh, lines on it that indicated that the screen was cracked or anything. It just went black. So I went to uh, an Apple repair shop and they said, we can fix it. It'll take a couple of days. And I was just about to go to Cairns. So I said, no, that's no good. I'm going to Cairns tomorrow. So they referred me to another Apple repair shop uh, in Cairns. I handed in my computer to this uh, guy and he said, well, technically, when it, since it's only nine months ago that you bought this new screen, it would be covered by the Australian government warranty. They have to give at least one year, I think maybe it's two years of warranty on anything you buy. But since you didn't buy it here, it's a problem. Uh, you bought it in Denmark, and I'm sure it's the same in Denmark, that they would uh, also cover it on this uh, warranty and I said, well, isn't it covered by the Apple warranty? Because it's on my Apple ID. And he said, well, I don't think so. No, it's the, no, no. But tell you what, give Apple a call and explain the situation before I start working on it. So I got on the phone and, and was connected to a guy from Apple. And uh, I explained my situation. And he said, well, it's above my pay grade. I'll, I'll have my superior uh, give you a call. That took 15 minutes. I got his superior on the phone and uh, and he said, well, I can see your problem, but it's above my pay grade. I'll have to speak to some of the other people here. I'll call you back. Half an hour later, he calls me back and says that we've had a meeting. And uh, even though we're not obligated to do so, we can see your problem and we sympathize with it. So we're going to give you a new screen. All you have to do is pay for the labor. That was nice of them. Thank you, Apple. And uh, I handed my computer in to the uh, nice guy at the repair shop. He said, it's going to take a couple of days. I said, that's fine, because I'm going scuba diving in the Great Barrier Reef for three days. By the way, episodes from that's coming up as well. And uh, when I got back with eight amazing dives under my belt, the computer was ready, and now it's working, and I am taking extra 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 good care of it every time i close the lid yeah if you're still listening to this you should have a medal for endurance <laughs> thank you so much and now here's a poem written and read by an ai down the mountainside palais trod in slippery mud his feet unshod 20 times he slipped yet undeterred caught in nature's whims his spirit spurred off the edge he went a sudden fall through foliage soft, his senses enthralled. His glasses, aloft, he snatched from the air, a nimble act, as if life played fair. On the equator's line, he found his way, where waters part, in different sway. A marvel to behold, this unique divide, nature's enigma, in this African stride. Returning to Kampala, a city awake, Palais discovered, to his dismay, his computer screen, lifeless and cold, a nomad's challenge, a tale untold. But amidst it all, a smile he wore, for the trip was magical, to the core. Gorillas encountered, memories vast, an adventure etched, destined to last. With resilience strong, he carries on, Palais' journey, to every land, beyond. For the world awaits, its wonders unfurled, a traveler's spirit, touching the world. That's it from Uganda, what a beautiful country, I so want to go back. We will now be arriving at the end of this installment of the Radio Vagabond. Next on the Radio Vagabond, we're going to a tiny country in Europe. The next stop will be Europe. If you like what you hear, please tell a friend. Mind the gap between this episode and the next one. My name is Palabo, and I gotta keep moving. See ya. Produced by radioguru.co.uk.